What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today I'm going to be showing you easy ways that you can add ear candy to your track to spice it up. What's up everyone, we are back with another video and for this week you guys voted on Instagram that you wanted to see easy ways to add ear candy to your song. If you're not familiar what ear candy is, it's basically those little production elements that are only going to happen once or twice and they're kind of really exciting when the listener does hear them and if the listener can't really hear them or pick them out, it just adds to the song. It might add a little bit of dynamic or a little bit of intensity or just give it something fresh that happens every now and then to keep listeners intrigued because you don't really want to go layering up the actual arrangement or the song at hand. Things can get really messy and kind of discombobulated so rather than loading your track up with a bunch of different stuff happening all at once it's good to kind of have a core arrangement and then sprinkle in some of these small little ear candy things that will happen here and there so today i'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and techniques that i like to do when i'm adding ear candy on a song as a final touch but if you have any ear candy tips or techniques that you like definitely leave them in the comments down below so we can all take some notes of those as well if you have any questions please let us know in the comments down below and i'll do my best to answer whatever i possibly can other than that if you like this video make sure you like comment and subscribe because that helps us out a ton but without further ado let's actually hop in and see how we can add some ear candy to this song all right now we're actually in the session uh if you like the song the song is released it's for an artist that i did called michael Harmon. the song is called lion and it is out so i'll post a link in the description if you want to hear the full thing um i think he's like 16 or 17 years old this is the first single that he did and it came out really really sick so i'm excited to kind of utilize it so I can show you some of the things that we did. But uh, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the ear candy that I added. So the main arrangement is pretty simple. We've got some drums right here. We've got a few synths right here. I used a lot of the Juno 106 and then I just kind of printed everything else. There's some guitar, there is some simple bass, and then there's some vocals over here. So it's not a super, super crazy arrangement, but I knew that I wanted a lot of little things that only happened once or twice. So let's go ahead and start with the first piece of ear candy that I'll tend to add, and that is reverb throws and delay throws. And this could be on a vocal, it could be on a synth, it could really be on anything. For this song at hand, we're gonna focus on a vocal. So let's go ahead and take a listen. So we have this for the verse. You tore it in half I thought we were inseparable I guess I was just gullible But I knew that I wanted a little bit of something, so I like doing delay and reverb throws. This is gonna be a delay throw. We'll go ahead and start over the first one. And if you're wondering how I'll do this, typically what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that main vocal uh, chain on a stereo track. And so we basically have that up to here. And then what I did was I added some decapitator to give us some saturation. I added repeater for the actual delay at hand. And then I added um, just some EQ to kind of filter everything out and some reverb. So all I'm doing is basically copying and pasting the phrase that I want to repeat. So this is what it sounds like. It's 100% wet. And then hearing that with the main vocal track, it sounds a little bit something like this. I thought we were inseparable. And just doing that on certain words and phrases can add a nice little bit of kind of tail and a nice little bit of sauce. And then what I did too for this song was we have so much space right there in that little blank spot. We were inseparable. I knew that I wanted something that would have a little bit more um, kind of sauce and character to it. So I basically did the same exact thing, except I drove the reverb a lot harder and a lot wetter. And then I have a little bit of kick start, so it's gonna side chain. And then I tuned it up an entire octave and auto tune. So you can see we're up 12 semitones. And so with it having a little bit more reverb, it has a little bit more distortion. It's tuned up an octave and it kind of has that kick start on it. It sounds a little bit something like this. And it almost sounds like a little synth line that comes in. So doing things like that with your delay throws and your reverb throws can really add a ton of character and a ton of depth to your song. We have a bunch of them that kind of happen throughout. Um, let me go ahead and just unmute a lot of these. Really the key to this was I wanted to do something that was going to fill in these blank spaces without having a million different melodic elements come in. That I was on your mind. So here's an example of a reverb throw just to kind of show you guys. It's basically the same exact thing as the delay throw. I just muted repeater and I just have the reverb 100% wet. And I just took that word or phrase that I wanted and kind of swelled it in. So it sounds a little bit something like this. Gave me hope that I was on your mind. 
You gave me hope you crossed a line Oh, you And it can kind of keep that main vocal dry, punchy, sitting right in the mix, but give us that space and that tail that we need on the end. So mixing that with the delay throw, we have this. That I was on your mind. You and then the last little one that we should probably talk about in terms of delay and reverb throws is in this chorus right here, we have like a response vocal. Lying, lying, lying. So that little response right there is in fact a vocal. It's literally just the same thing, duplicated over. Lying, lying, lying. And all we did for that was tuned it up again in auto-tune, tuned it up an entire octave right here, and then threw on some Camel Crusher for some distortion, a doubler to kind of spread it out. We threw on a phaser to give it that like warbly phasey sound. EQ'd it out, kind of filtered it to where it was just that like mid telephonic frequency, added a ton of reverb. And then this is one of the weird cases that I added the delay after the reverb. And that's because I wanted that washy sound to be part of that response. And I just wanted to delay everything after that. So if I swap these uh, reverbs and delays, we'd get a little bit of a different vibe, but this fit what I wanted for the song. And then altogether it sounded like this. I'm buying. You gave me five. So doing little reverb throws and delay throws like that, that you can A, just fill in the space, but B, process really, really creatively, will be a good opportunity for you to add a ton of ear candy to fill in any blank spaces that you have without constantly throwing in more, you know, guitars or synths or basses or little percussive things that we will talk about in this video, but that might just get a little bit irritating to listen to. So when in doubt, throw a reverb or a delay throw in there. All right, the second one that I want to talk about is adding little percussion elements or little percussive fills. So you've probably seen me layer up percussion a ton in a song before, um, and that tends to be part of Ear Candy. So like in the song right now, we have a couple main snaps and a rim hit that basically happen every time. So the snaps are happening on a two and four, and the rim hit is happening every other. So we have... But what I wanted to do was I wanted to add something just a little bit extra. So I added in a tambourine hit that's like one every four. And adding that just gives us a little bit of extra definition. So adding little percussive elements like that that don't happen on every hit is a good way to add a little bit of depth and texture. And then we've got some fills right here where I like adding in little percussive fills. These are a couple of different echo sound works loops that I had kind of chopped up and repitched and retimed. And so we have one right here that is pretty sick. It's just uh... for processing on that. We didn't really do anything. I just time aligned it. And then as far as the second one, we have this. But when we have both of those together, it kind of gives us this cool little, uh, really, really weird feel. So doing little things like that that can transition from section to section are a really nice way, because if we took those out, that transition's just a bit boring. So I was just gullible. You said that I was on your mind. Doesn't really hit, but when we add that back in, we get something like this. On your mind. So adding little things like that here and there that can kind of just add a little bit of movement or that can add a little bit of extra texture on top of your percussion that you already have is going to be huge because if we were to take these tambourine hits out and we were to take those fills out, this just gets really stale and boring. You said that I was on your mind. Versus something like this. So you can see how little elements like that start to add a really, really big amount of texture and movement to the picture without really getting in the way of the arrangement and being an extra loop that we add on top that kind of continues or without being this extra thing that adds this weird kind of counter groove that we don't need. So just adding little things like that that you can kind of sprinkle in is going to be huge for kind of creating a nice little moving vibe. The next thing I want to talk about is something that's pretty similar, but it's done with synths or guitars or keys. It's kind of like a melodic motif like that. So instead of just only sprinkling in, um, you know, percussive things here and there, we can kind of do the same thing with melody instruments. So we kind of heard that already when we heard that little like 1975 style guitar come in um, that just acts as like a nice little hit every now and then. Ooh. So adding things like that can be really big. And then there's also these little guitar riffs that we only add 
every once in a while that are tucked super far back in the mix that you can barely hear, but it kind of sounds like this. And in the whole mix, if you weren't paying attention, you might not even hear it. So it's not super audible, but let's take it out and kind of hear how it just sounds a little empty and stale. You told me that your heart was mine. Oh, you were. Oh, you were. By adding that little extra guitar riff, it kind of signifies that the end of that section is coming, and we've got something that just comes in one time and then ends. And to me, it just felt really, really nice, and it was a nice little, you know, nod to like an 80s super chorusy distorted guitar tone. And then we kind of do the same thing in verse two, but we do it with um, choice of bass notes. So we kind of start to sprinkle in some little kind of bass runs here and there, and that can just add a nice little bit of texture. So it's not even super audible in the mix because we still had that main 808. So just adding little jumpy basses and stuff like that is another good way that you can add. Um, not only does that add melody, but it also adds a little bit of rhythm too. So between doing stuff like that, stuff like that little guitar riff that'll only happen once or twice, those little kind of twangy 1975 style guitar tones, those are just really, really good ways that you can add ear candy to whatever kind of melodic element that you have. And then you can also just go through and process things really weird. So like we have a guitar right here. Then we've put a bunch of sparkle and shimmer on and we put these like reverse delays. So now that kind of acts as a pad on top of a guitar. So just finding a way to make one element sound like several elements is a huge way to not clutter up your arrangement, but give the listener something a little bit more exciting. Why, why, why? Did you have to lie, lie, lie? Stick so there you go. Don't be afraid to add in these little melodic motifs that will only happen once or twice throughout a song. Um, not every melodic element has to be going all the time. Let's go ahead and talk about tip number four, and that is adding in starts and stops appropriately. And that is where do you cut out before a chorus comes in? Where do you cut out before a verse comes in? Where does it cut out during a verse? These are nice little ways to add intensity. You probably hear a ton in like a hip hop song where you know, a really fire one-liner or a punchline will come up and the beat will kind of drop out, the vocal hits, and then it comes back in super hard. You can definitely do that in your kind of productions as well. We have a really good example of that when we transition to verse two. So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at that. So here we go, we're transitioning out of that first like drop chorus into the second chorus. Yeah. I haven't thought very straight since the last time we spoke. My sanity shot, you took my pain as a joke. And we'll add in some stuff later that'll make that hit a little bit harder. But that's a good example of how by taking out a little bar and a little measure, it makes that second verse seem a little bit more urgent and it makes it seem a little bit more exciting where it's pretty much just the same thing copy and pasted from the first verse. But since we allow ourselves to have that little minute of rest, it doesn't seem exhausting because we kind of let it die down and then it comes in full speed. So adding something like that and then you can kind of hear too later in the song where We'll definitely take a second to kind of let that drum fill play out before the chorus really comes in. I'm not a huge fan of driving a verse or a pre-chorus until the last measure into the chorus. I like to give myself either like a half bar or a one bar little moment of silence where that chorus can impact a little bit harder. So let's check that out. Oh, oh, yeah. So adding little starts and stops like that before a chorus, after a chorus, in the middle of a verse to emphasize a word or a phrase are really easy things. You don't even really need to add any production. You just need to strip away a little bit for a measure. So, you know, maybe you just pull down all the faders and silence it. I think we can probably see that on, yeah, you can see like right here, what we'll do is I'll literally just automate everything down. And it just makes the chorus feel that much harder. It's just a nice little way to kind of increase that intensity for the listener where they know something really important is about to happen. Or if they're kind of just moving along, like going into that second verse, it kind of forces them to come back in and pay a little bit more attention when you pull everything out and you make it really hit. Let's go to one of the most important things you can add. And it's one thing that we haven't talked about yet. And that is risers, hits and transitional effects. So you can even kind of hear a little bit as this chorus comes in, it's missing a little something, right? Like the tension's not really building up. It's not really releasing. Yeah. 
So what can we do to help that? We can add things like hits, crashes, reverse noises, any kind of little effect like that. So let's go ahead. I have a couple different reverse swells right here, a transitional kind of crash noise, and then a couple big clap impacts. So let's hear how these few different layers kind of add a ton of, of kind of beef and urgency to this. Give me false hope, yeah. It's one of those things that you wouldn't even really hear if you weren't necessarily paying attention, but when they're not there, it definitely feels a little empty. I'll give you a, a quick little AB again. Here's where they falls, hope, yeah. lying, lying, lying. And then here's without it, just so you can kind of hear. So adding things like that can make sure that you don't way overcrowd your chorus, but you still have that down impact when you really want it. Cause you don't want to have too many elements going because they'll start to get in the way of the vocals. Where if you just have these big crashes and impacts, it's not really going to get in the way of the vocal. It just makes it hit really hard. And then they'll kind of dissipate before it starts kind of creating this cluttered mess. So you can do it with kind of pre-made ones like that. So these are a couple pre-made claps and a couple pre-made risers and stuff like that. Um, we also have like a symbol over here. Yes. And you can kind of uh, tweak these in, in duration. So the faster you have them, the more urgent it'll seem. You said that I was on your mind. Not all of them have to be this big two bar run up. And then we do it again with like some claps in the verses. So we've kind of got a clap. We've printed it, reversed it into itself. I guess I was just colorful. You said that I was on your mind. So those transitional noises make a huge difference, but they're not only limited to the pre-made little effects like that. I, a lot of the time, will like to kind of print an element that I have, and what I'll do is I'll print it, put a bunch of reverb on it, and then I'll reverse it. So we kind of have an example of that with this Juno pad right here. So that's just gonna reverse really nicely into this chorus. When we spoke, my sanity shot. Or into the verse, excuse me. So we'll do something like that, and then I'll do it a lot of the time too with like a vocal. There's a reverse vocal right over here. And if you want to see how to make something like that, I'll go ahead and give you a really, really quick rundown. It's pretty easy, but um, let's just go ahead and use something like this rim, right? So let's do... All right, so what I'm gonna do is let me duplicate this track so I can just kind of get it soloed out because I just want one hit of it. And what I'll do is I'll make a hit and then I'll also simultaneously make a riser from it. So right now we have this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that repeater. I don't really want any uh, echo in my riser or my initial swell. I'm gonna add a bunch of distortion. Let me turn this down a little bit. And then what I can do is I'll just drive this really long and really wet. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of shimmer. I don't really want it so filtered out. I want it to be kind of bright so we can add a nice little bit of hit. I think we need a little bit of something else just to give it some texture. So I'm gonna play around with like a metalizer. All right, so let's try that. And then what I'll do is I'll just highlight it, go to edit, make sure my render settings are cool, but I'm pretty positive they are. And then I'll just render that in place. So now we have this. So we can use that as a hit or I can reverse it. All you have to do to reverse it is double click it, hit process, go to add process and reverse. So now we have this cool little, uh, this cool little swell as well. So I'll just cut it at like a measure sweep it up and then you can kind of hear what we got let's go ahead and take a listen we're just playing the field and I got let's go ahead and activate that so it kind of hits again we're just playing the field and I got caught in the trap so that's an example of how you can make a riser and a hit out of pretty much anything. You can do that with a synth hit. You can do that with a percussive hit. You can do it with a vocal shout. All you gotta do is put on a bunch of reverb, put on a bunch of processing. You can make it as gnarly or as simple as you want, and then print it out with all that reverb, keep that as a hit, print it out, and then reverse it for the kind of swell up. And then if you want to, you can e even add stuff like, you know, gates and stuff like that. So let's add a trance gate so we can get that um, kind of like hip hop riser noise. 
and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. And then we'll move on to the next tip because I don't want this one to take too, too long. But let's just say we have like a 16th. So you can do it like that. You can change it to like a 16th. So let's, let's try this. You were just playing the field and make it a uh, 30 second. You were just playing the field and I got caught. Doesn't fit the vibe, but it works really cool on electronic songs or hip hop songs. So if you're looking for something, that's how you can do it. It's really easy. You can make a riser and a hit out of pretty much anything. Feel free to layer up stuff, process stuff super crazy, get weird with it. And the last thing I wanna talk about is adding these weird, super affected layers that almost act as sins, but they sit really low under everything. I like to do it a lot for vocals. I've also done it quite often for synths. And this song, I'll just go ahead and kind of show you what I mean in the bridge right here. But what I'll do is I like to kind of take an element that might sound a little bit natural and throw on this really weird process. And so here we just have this. So I basically just threw on this guitar rig preset that is spinning in space, and it kind of makes that little ooh into a little pad, and then that sits really nicely under everything. Why, why, why? Did you have to lie, lie, lie? Stick and this is again one of those elements that you don't really hear, but when I take it out, it kind of sucks everything out and it has no energy and it feels a little empty. So you can kind of do stuff like that. Or what you can do is you can process things really weird like over here. I had to stop and analyze The love I falsely fantasized And we kind of process that the same as the delay throws, but uh, it just gives you a kind of a good little aspect into what we're doing. And then once again, we kind of take a guitar and process it like a pad. Nice. The love I falsely fantasized. And then we have this little Juno right here that is just really tucked under. So you can add elements that are just super processed where it might be a synth that's doing the exact same thing. It'll add that texture and that depth and that dimension without adding something that really conflicts. So we have those little kind of lying responses that are super processed and then we have this on top. And it just sits in really nice. It makes it really easy. So if you have something where you feel like the arrangement might be done, but you just want a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth, don't be afraid to take a track and process it super weird so it kind of sits way farther in the background rather than being an upfront element. And I think that that's a really, really good way to kind of add in that little bit of depth and texture that you don't really hear, but as a listener, you definitely feel. And as a producer, it might just be that last little, you know, 5% that's missing where your track feels empty, but the mix is solid, the arrangement's solid, the song itself is solid. You just need to kind of fill in those gaps. So. That's uh, all the tips that we're gonna talk about in this video. I could keep going on this for hours, but it's super subjective to the song at hand. So definitely feel free to take any of these tips and kind of transform them into whatever's gonna work for you. But I think that's gonna do it. And there you have it. There's a couple ways that you can add small little elements here and there just to add a little bit of intensity to a song or add a little bit of spice and a little bit of something for listeners to kind of have that little nice treat, which is why people refer to it as ear candy. So hopefully you like this video. This is just a few things that you can do. The options are literally limitless, but hopefully this will kind of give you some inspiration on tools to add to your repertoire, or it'll just give you some inspiration on things that we might not have covered in this video, but you can start adding to your tracks to put your own little signature stamp on, make the artist more excited to hear it, make the listener more excited to keep listening. And uh, yeah, these are just really, really good things that I think you should be doing at the final stages of most productions. But if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below and let us know what videos you wanna see in the near future. Other than that, I think that pretty much does it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will be back next week with more videos. Videos. Much love, mate, pop. Peace.